Hi, welcome to From the Baseline, uh, Worldwide Hoops Edition. This is episode five, um, and we're honored to have on uh, Hakeem Salim from uh, the Netherlands. He is the uh, uh, the national team coach there for the Dutch Nationals team and, and in charge of the pathways coming up. And so we're honored to have him with us um, on episode five. And, and we talk about the development pathway there in, in Netherlands and and uh, the recruitment of Dutch players. And, and so I uh, hope you enjoy this interview. Hey, from the baseline with Premier Basketball, this is uh, Mark Williams, uh, Premier Basketball International Scout. And I am joined today by Hakeem Salem. Uh, he is the head coach of the Netherlands uh, senior national team, uh, five on five and three on three. Uh, he is also the head coach of, of the development program on the women's side there in Netherlands. Hakeem, how are you today? I'm uh, I'm, I'm doing fine. Thanks, uh, Mark, and uh, thanks a lot for the invitation. It is great to be on uh, on your podcast. We we appreciate you coming on with us. How is uh, before we get started in the basketball stuff? How's life there in the Netherlands uh, with the coronavirus? Uh, to be honest, Mark is pretty boring right now. We are uh, we are uh, locked down, uh, no practices. The schools are shut down. Um, I'm part of the Olympic team that's still competing for Olympic ticket, 3x3 senior national team. So we are advised uh, to stay home uh, and to stay away actually from uh, any contacts. So right now we're just sitting home, hoping to hear more about the Olympics soon. Absolutely. Look like today they're going to take the next four weeks to evaluate and then make a decision on the Tokyo Olympics. Um, I hope it will be a good decision, though, because we have worked the whole year for for this moment. Right. No, absolutely. So, did did the the Netherlands three on three team qualify for the Olympics? Not yet. Actually, as we speak, we should have been in India right now playing our qualification games. Uh, that of course got cancelled. So uh, we are waiting on what will be the, the the procedure to qualify for the Olympics. Hopefully, they just if they postpone it, they just postpone that tournament, and and you know y'all have it at a later date, just like you would this year. Um, Absolutely. Hopefully, that's what happens. I hope so. so now, how how long have you been the head uh, head coach? of the senior national team there in the Netherlands? Well, I started in 2015 as assistant coach uh, with the national team. Uh, I took over in 2017 as a national team head coach. I'm doing both programs, 5 on 5 and 3x3 for the women's senior team. And I'm also the head coach of the development program, the, the CTO. Uh, so, uh, to be fully in charge since 2017. So, that, that's that got to be nice as as the head coach that you're in charge on the women's side of not only five on five, three on three, but the whole development program. So, you get to to help these kids develop how, how y'all want them to play uh, and prepare them to, to represent the national team. Um, yeah, that's that's exactly what we're doing on a daily basis with our development program. Uh, we have uh, uh, developed a lot of good players, I think, who left the last year to to United States to play in, in decent colleges. Uh, and we are trying to develop them uh, to be a real added value to our national senior team on a, on a long term. Right. Yeah, explain and talk a little bit about uh, y'all's development model. Um, what does that look like from somebody who's never came and watched basketball there in the Netherlands? Uh, you know, what's y'all's plan uh, and maybe even a little bit about y'all's style of play uh, that y'all are trying to achieve? Well, the, the, the style of play is actually uh, based on uh, creating the advantage in the offense uh, to be as quick as possible after we make a stop. 
we are a defensive minded uh, program uh, and we like to run the first eight seconds of the shot clock. If, uh, if we don't have this advantage in the first eight seconds, we will uh, slow in our offense. We don't have like a real set offenses. We have uh, entries. And from those entries, we will flow in our offense and we're teaching our players to read the defense uh, and don't try to put a lot of assignment uh, in their head during the offense. Uh, in the defense, it's pretty clear how we want to play defense. We like to play aggressive defense, full court pressure defense, uh, and try to translate that with, uh, with switching defense because we are pretty tall. Uh, and be very dynamic in in the in the defensive end. Uh, what we also like to do with especially with with the youth program is we like to put them in different positions on the court. So trying to build up a player that can play on different spots on the court, not only one or two spots, but maybe multiply spots. So we'll have our bigs bring up the ball and flow in offense. We have our guards post up. Uh, and give us different looks. So it is very dynamic, very fast. We like to play very quick in offense uh, and aggressive in the defense. This very small summarize summary. No, that's great. And and how are y'all implementing that style of play in, into the development program with younger kids coming up? Well, the, 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 the tough thing about the program is we have different ages. So let me, let me talk a little bit about the program. Uh, we will recruit our, our first years, our freshmen. Uh, they will be around 16 years old. But at the same time, we will have last year, the seniors in our program, they will be around 18, sometimes 19. So it's not only physical differences on the court, but also basketball uh, differences. So we would like to do a lot of individual workouts. Uh, so uh, uh, let's say on Tuesday, it will be only individual workouts in the morning and in the afternoon. Uh, on Wednesday, we like to get our, our stuff, our early offenses uh, going. And we would like to break down the week very, very, uh, to make it very, very clear for our players. Uh, I like to make it very simple. Uh, that means uh, we like to break down our five-on-five -five stuff and make it very small. So we start first with one-on-one, two-on-two, and three-on-three. -on -three. And later on, as the year progress, we work on four-on-four -on -four and five-on-five because our approach is let's make the players better let's make the players uh, who can beat their men one-on-one -on -one. and if we can do that they will add value in the five on five no, absolutely if they can beat their defender then you're creating advantage uh against the defense because there's got to either be help or or they should get to the realm um and so Everybody being able to get to different spots and being able to create their own shot uh, makes it hard to guard. It's always hard to guard five um, when all five can't create and score. So um, That's what, what we're really trying to do. with uh, Also with the national team seniors, we like really to be very dynamic. Every player on the court should be a playmaker. Right. Uh, and that's that's what we do basically daily on a daily basis with our program. Right. Now the the basketball pathway, you know, they all start young playing, you know, before fifteen, yes. uh, different clubs, and then um, the the federation has a school that they invite the top kids to, correct? Yeah, that's 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 where I'm responsible for. Yes. Yep. Because and we are. And the name of that school is? Uh, that will be the Center for uh, Talent and Education. Uh, and in Dutch, it will be CTO. CTO? Yes. 
so so talk a little bit about the CPO process and how you how kids come there and what all that that program provides. Well, CPO you can compare it with uh, a, a college system actually, but for younger players. So well, they will leave their own house or or parent house and come and live in Amsterdam uh, nearby the school. Uh, we will practice on the morning from seven to nine before they go to school uh, at 10 o'clock. They will go to school afterwards, uh, and right after the school, they will go back to the gym, uh, have the second practice of the day, uh, eat something, make their homework, and go back to the apartment and sleep. We like to call it city campus, because Amsterdam is not very big, so uh, every location, uh, um, in, in the city is, let's say, 10, 20 minutes with the bike or uh, or, or with the public transportation. Uh, and we like to uh, teach our players already to get used to how to handle themselves if they are heading to United States, for, for, for example, because most of our players uh, who join our program has the ambition to join a college after they finish the CTO. Well, that's great to hear. So, from a from a basketball uh, federation side, um, you, are, you are very uh, very much advantageous on your your players who attend the CPO uh, going to the states. What have y'all found to be the benefit of going and playing in the states for those players? Well, first of all, we, uh, we, we see a big difference uh, physically. Um, if we can get the right colleges in the right conference, we see also that our players coming back and really uh, bringing the speed what they used to play in the United States uh, and also the, the, the decision-making on the court is, uh, is much better uh, and also, it's, it's the next step in their in their education because uh, if you leave our program, you're 18 years old, you're too young uh, to play professionally. Uh, you're not, like I said, you're not done yet developing. So you need four more years uh, to become more physically and become more mature as a basketball player. And the United States is a great spot for much of these players. Now, if I'm a college coach and I want to start recruiting uh, players uh, from Netherlands, what's the what's the best process to go about that, or, or where's the best time I can come over come over and watch them play? We have a lot of college coaches coming and visiting our program, our CPO program, and they they will they will see our they will see our practice, uh, they will meet the coaches, uh, they see the facilities. Uh, have the chance to talk to the players, uh, watch a game in the weekend in Amsterdam or somewhere in Holland if we're playing away. Uh, also, we have colleges coming to the European Girls Basketball League, uh, which we play also, and that will be maybe sometimes in Latvia, sometimes in Belarus, sometimes somewhere else in, in Eastern Europe. Uh, and last but not least, and I think most important, is uh, seeing our players playing uh, for the national team in the summer during the European Championship. Yeah, absolutely. I know we've. I've been to a practice and and yes. have seen y'all playing it, playing new, numerous championships. Um, with the potential of the the national championships, the European under 16s and under 18s, uh, potentially being canceled due to the coronavirus. You know, how does that affect y'all within the development program? Well, it it it, it really hurts us. Uh, and if if the European Championships, the Youth European Championship, got cancelled, I fully understand because it is really a big crisis. But for our girls to showcase their their talent, it will be very hard because that's where all the uh, recruiting happening happened actually. So uh, it will be tough 
for our players to get spots. But I also have to say that most of our class of 2020 is already being recruited. We only have, I think, one, maybe two players, I think two players who uh, who are still looking for a college or still talking to several colleges, but due to the lockdown, they couldn't visit uh, those colleges, so uh, they are on hold. But the rest of other players who are supposed to leave uh, have found already a college. Right. Now, who, who's the 2020 that's still left? Uh, Can you give a shout-out to any of those players who are still looking? Uh, and, and still looking and still talking to colleges is uh, Anuska Meyer. Uh, still looking and uh, talking is also Monique Meringa. Uh And those two actually are the, the, the only two. We have one injury, uh, one injured player, so uh, Bente. First day, she will stay one more year with the program to recover from the injury and find herself a better spot uh, next, uh, not next season, but the season afterwards. Okay. Now, do you, you always have kids you're developing coming up? Who are some kids looking to come over in the next couple of classes that colleges need to need to make sure to know about it and put on their radar? Well, yeah, of course, we have a lot of actually every every girl is in in our program uh, who who's joining our program, they have the ambition to to be the best player they can. Right now, uh I'm thinking about uh Alina Sander who's supposed to be under 18 this year or Jalisa Molina, uh, very athletic players, those two. Uh and College is already trying to recruit them right now, but they still have a couple of years with us. Uh, they're young, they're athletic. Uh, they are really fitting the profile like I like to play with the national team. Uh, those are the coming ones, uh, but we're also thinking about uh, one of the, the new recruits we have uh, who really making a huge progress is uh, Phoenix Totain. Uh, and guard who can do it all, can shoot, drive, uh, very athletic point guard. I think he's going to be very, very high potential in the future. I'm not going to mention the whole team, but uh, we we have a couple of girls that uh, that will make uh, big noise in a couple of years. That's good to hear. Now, coaches wanted to learn more about the CPO and and. Um, and recruiting their players, uh, can they find you on Twitter or, or Facebook? Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm not. I'm, I'm on Facebook, but I'm not doing anything online uh, or with Facebook. Uh, Twitter sometimes. Um, what What we like to do is let me let me also talk a little bit about the coaching staff I'm working with. Yeah, um, I'm working with uh, full time with two coaches and one uh, assistant coach. Uh, the first coach I'd like to mention is uh, Thijs Fomer. He's also a youth uh, uh, head coach of the national team. And the second coach is actually an American player who used to play in Holland, uh, but she's living in, in, in Holland now for several years, uh, Molly McDowell. Uh, and the last coach, the assistant coach, is uh, Stein van Duin. He's a young coach who, who likes to be part of the program to develop himself. With those coaches, I'm working daily, on a daily basis. Uh, and with those coaches also, I'm trying to find the right colleges for the players, but also to help the players develop, even if they are in the United States. And if they have questions, if they have anything to ask us, uh, they can reach out for, for, for us. So this is the coaching staff. Uh, we are not very, very busy online. Uh, we don't have the, the urgency to do that. Uh, of course, you can find me on Twitter. Uh, I got a lot of contact through the social media. Um, so if there are any coaches trying to reach out for me, 
please send me an email, uh, send me a, a tweet, whatever. Uh, I will read it. I will get back to you. And what is your Twitter handle? Uh, Hakim Salem, actually, uh, is is my Twitter name. Uh, I think we're linked, right, Mark? I don't know if yeah, we are, but we yeah, are linked, we are. right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, let, let me check. Yeah, uh, at Hakim Salem. Okay. And, and Salem okay. is like the the city in the United States. Like Winston Salem. Yep. Yes, that's it. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. Now, as, as we wrap this interview up, anything else you'd like to share, um, basketball wise or? the development program or CPO or anything like that? Well, uh, I always like to 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 develop the program and and get to know also what what, what colleges are looking for if, if they're recruiting players. Uh, and I would love to hear from, from different colleges and different coaches what they are looking for, but also maybe get a chance to uh, look inside the kitchen and get to know more about uh, uh, the high performance culture of basketball in the United States. Now, absolutely. Well, I'm sure there will be, uh, you know, some colleges reaching out and sharing about their stuff and building relationships. And, and uh, you know, we'll most definitely keep our conversation going as far as players and stuff. And you know, maybe here in the near future, uh, the CPO team can come over and play. Uh, in an event here in the States uh, and get to visit some schools and, and get to see firsthand uh, and play against some of the talent here in the States, uh, you know, during the during the, the our high school season. Yeah, that would be great. That would be really great for us. So, well, we appreciate you coming on to the call, to the interview with us. And, and, My uh, pleasure. I know we... We've connected. I enjoyed my time there. Um, this national team workout uh, about two years ago. Um, yes, over and I remember. And enjoyed my time and, and look look forward to coming back over once all this uh, coronavirus stuff settles down and, and we can start traveling and, and get back to life normal. You're always welcome, Mark. You know how to reach me. Uh, so looking forward to meet you again. Sounds good. For uh, Mark Williams with Premier Basketball, this is From the Baseline.